This is Jordan again for another edition of the book Knowledge Share. So excited to have you. Glad you could join me. I'm going to be sharing with you some knowledge from a recent book that I've read. So this week I'm going to be talking about a book called Stealing Fire. It's by Stephen Kotler and really excited to dig into this one with you a little bit. So Stephen Kotler himself, he is an, an author who's written several books over the years, one called Abundant, another one called Boom, and they're really interesting books in that they share some interesting research around things that are going on. In the case of this book called Stealing Fire, he talks about alternative mind states. And alternative mind states, a lot of people understand meditation. Meditation is a process of getting into an alternative mind state. And so he goes into somewhat of a moral discussion, but also talks a little bit about why people go into this state, how people get into this state, and some of the benefits and disadvantages of getting into this state, some of the things you need to watch out for. So a few things that I've learned from this book. One of them is what actually determines an alternative mind state. There are four things to look for, and there's an acronym that Mr. Kotler puts in the book called STIR, that's S-T-E-R, and it goes like this. The first one is selflessness, and that essentially means to get outside of yourself. Being in an alternative mind state, you get yourself outside of yourself. The next one is timelessness, and it essentially means you're losing perspective of time. When I play piano myself personally, I get into the state of flow where I lose perspective of time. I finish up and I'm like, where did that hour go? And that's kind of the, what happens when you get into this alternative mind state. The next thing is the E, which is effortlessness. And that essentially means that things feel easy when you're in a state of flow. This state of flow allows you to feel like things are going by really simply. For me, getting into piano, when I get into an automated state where I'm in that flow, things feel really, really easy. Things go by really, really quickly. Challenging passages in music are so much more easy to consume and to get over. So finally, the last thing is richness. The R is for richness. And essentially this means you get a better heightened state of awareness and your senses become more aware, your touch, your sense of smell, your sense of hearing, your sense of sight, all those things become more heightened and you're able to really engage in the now, which is really what it's all about. So those are the four things that you got to look for if you're going to get into an alternative state of mind. Now, a few other things that I got from this book. One is a simple quote that says that madness isn't found in individuals, it's found in group. And this was really an interesting point because when we think of, when we get together with a group, a lot of times we tend to take the behaviors of those group. And why this is significant is because if you're trying to improve yourself, it's really important to get yourself into a place where you're with like-minded people. You're with those people who are trying to improve themselves in a similar way. So there's been studies in the past that have shown if you're trying to lose weight, you should get together with people who have lost weight or people who are leaner than you are because you're going to learn, you're going to naturally pick up some of those things that help people stay lean. So really interesting point, something to think about as you go on a self-improvement journey. Get yourself in front of people and surround yourself with like-minded people who can help you grow. Another thing that I picked up from this book that I thought was really, really super interesting is the idea that when we are planning something for a year, we can't accomplish as much as we can when we think about 10 years. So we tend to overestimate what we can get done in a year, and we underestimate what we can get done in 10. And that's a direct quote from Bill Gates, simply stating that a lot of times we tend to think we can get so much done in a short period. However, when we think of a long period, we tend not to dream as big as we can. So if we're trying to put together a meditation practice, for example, 
it's going to take us a little while to get into that groove. It's not going to happen overnight. However, when we think of that 10 year period, you can really dream big. You can say, you know what, I'm going to be a Zen master. I'm going to be a Zen Buddhist master and you'll be an expert at meditation. So in the short term, allow process to happen, allow things to, for lack of a better word, flow. But when you're thinking of the 10 year mark, make sure that you dream big, dream big, as big as you can. Allow your mind to really expand. Okay. And finally, I'm going to leave you with this last thing is that Getting into an alternative state is quite a benefit for us, even if we can only do just a little bit. Just a little bit is beneficial. So take five, ten minutes out of your day, start a meditation practice. Take five, ten minutes out of your day to get yourself into an alternative mind state. And that's really the big thing that I've learned from this book. So without further ado, go check out that book. Stealing Fire by Stephen Kotler. And until next week, this is Jordan here. I'm going to sign off, but before I do, I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel below, leave a comment, let me know what books you want to hear in the future, and I'll definitely check them out. So until next week, this is Jordan. Take care.